Hey everyone, this is Deadpool Negative. I'm back. I have another review of a comic from my pile. A trade collection of issues I'd read back in when they came out um, 12, yeah, 12 years ago, 12, 11 years ago. Um, but, you know, now I'm, in, I'm reading them. Now. I'm going to go over it now. Um, comics I thought they were really good at the time, and uh, when I reread this collection, they're still pretty good. Um, it's a collection of, uh, back in uh, 2012, to tie in with the movie, Marvel launched an Avengers Assemble title. The first eight issues were written by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley. And aside from the truly awful scene where somebody goes to Star-Lord, what do you, where, how'd you come back from uh, the events of uh, Realm of Kings? He just looks at the, looks at the reader as if to say, I don't, that's not, that's not my department. That's wherever, that's not my department. Stop it. It's for a Brian Bendis comic uh, with the word Avengers in the title. It's actually readable and somewhat entertaining, even though it makes a little sense. It's like, it's uh, the Guardi, like Star-Lord, the Thanos, like Mark Bagley drawing, you know, and thankfully it was also the end of his run. I have a lot to say about Brian Michael Bendis Avengers, none of it good. And I don't feel like talking about it anymore, so I will move on. But after the Avengers Assemble title continued for about, I believe, issue 25. And there was another writer that took on after that. And I have this collection collects their first arc, which was a, a three-parter um, involving uh, the Avengers, um, the main Avengers team. And a two-parter focusing on Spider-Woman, Black, uh, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. And... Uh, Here's the big twist, folks. And, and also contains the first annual, which is written by Christos Gage. And that first annual also contains what I think is one of the best Avengers stories I've ever written, at least in the modern age. But I'm burying the lead because the author of immediately following Brian Michael Mendes' run was... That's right, Kelly Sue DeConnick. Longtime Warren Ellis Forum moderator, sometime comic writer, um, a wife of Matt Fraction, a person I've met in the real world. I'll get to that in a sec. Um, but mostly people know her from that clip where she discusses her comic Bitch Planet, um, which is a, a sci fi series drawn by Valentine Di Leandro about women. Um, if I recall correctly, the plot is women uh, being kidnapped by their spouses and forced to um, be in this this um, space prison where they learn to be better women. I don't like that series. I don't like that series. It's what my friend Phil would call an enlightening experience for people who like to be shrieked at. But I understand what it's trying to do, even though I disagree with the way it's doing it. That series lasted for about two, about 10 issues, 12. It was supposed to be ongoing, but it ended. Um, and there was a spinoff series, which had a Cheryl Lynn Eaton story in it, which kind of says all, all, all that needs to be said about that. Um, but there was, there was a clip online of her talking about that series. And she knows it's a politi very politically charged series. And she says, if you don't like my politics, don't buy my books. Problem solved. And Comics YouTube basically spun that into her talking, that was talking about all fans, talking about the entire industry, talking it like they basically nail, they basically want to hang the rest of the industry for her sins, which is dumb. She, I've like, I've met her in the real world. She, she's actually a, she and Matt are a lot more warm and nice than they appear on on camera. I think for, having met them both, I think they both have a problem with seeing their public behavior, online behavior as, as like a persona. People don't like that anymore. But I'm sending this up to make you understand this is actually a really good comic book. This is some good Avenger stuff. And it's not just because it immediately follows Brian Michael Bendis Avengers. It is very solid, enjoyable superheroics and it's worth reading. Um, Let's see. Basically, the first story is called, ugh, I hate this title, Science Bros. And it's about like uh, um, genius minds being kidnapped. And let's see. 
they 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 basically the Hulk and Iron Man make a bet that they can um again like he does a, she does a really good job with these characters of not writing them as jerks which will will come in later which is interesting considering what she's best known for which is writing Captain Marvel as a jerk I don't exactly agree with that um characterization of her work on Captain Marvel but a lot of other people do I mean she like and like Bendis wrote them all as jerks Bendis wrote Bendis Bendis. Um, I think she, she gets the characterizations of uh, Banner and uh, uh, um, Stark as clashing egos, but he's, they're, they're annoying, but they're in a fun way, and I think she does a good job characterizing the Hulk. So basically, there's a would would be like I, I want to read the back. Would would be tyrant Young Guang Han threatens to when would be tyrant Young Guang Han threatens to release an eons old evolutionary bacterium that would bring humanity to its end, and Avengers must find a way to stop a microscopic threat. That becomes uh, catastrophic when it infects the Hulk. I mean, it's it's standard stuff. It's a weird tyrant using science, and but he does a good job. She does a very good job, like characterizing all these guys, and it's fun, it's entertaining, and just everything you should want. In it. What's interesting is for the woman who defi who defined Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is basically reduced to a plot device here. She has, see has much more fun writing Spider Woman. The Hulk and Iron Man, and then, then she does most of the other characters. Um, and it, it's really just really entertaining. But the, the second story is the real meat, and I really I was rereading this. Like, damn, I was like, damn, this is still still pretty good. Pete Woods draws the second story, and it opens with the Black Widow in her past assassinating someone in front of the you know just sniping it in the head in front of his wife. And we jump ahead, you know, to the present. And uh, what what DeConnick is doing is uh, going on the um, the old Red on My Ledger line from the Avengers movie. She's uh, doing a really good job with that. Uh, like, she do, she she's just making a story about that. And it's about how the Black Widow, she basically tracks down the, the wife of the woman she killed, of the man she killed, and finds out her daughter is missing. Her daughter was investigating against weird science experience experiments. And, you know, the story is about, like, you know, Spider-Woman, Hawkeye, and the Black Widow um, do, doing, uh, you know, trying to investigate what happened to this woman who is a reporter and is investing weird science experience, experiments, of course. Remember, Kelly Sudakata goes to career to Warren Ellis, the weird science guy. And, like, basically, it's kind of, it's, it follows, it's weird. They're both kind of about the same thing because it's all about mutation. The previous story was about mutations. This story is also about mutations, but it's it just really works better um, in the in this story, just slightly better because at one point, the Black Widow gets infected and turns into a lizard lady. I mean, they're, it's all about fighting lizard people, but it's just, the characterization is just really, really strong and... There's a great scene where Black Widow just something horrible to herself to save somebody. And it really it is just fa fascinating. Like she's, it's about the Black Widow trying to redeem herself and really very strong. Um, I was, I was impressed with it. I was kind of like, I mean, at the time if you told me, oh, she's going to be writing Black Widow next. I would have been over the moon. You know, and there's some really great artwork by Pete Woods, but uh, Mark Bagley kind of draws most of the second issue. And, you know, Mark's, Mark Bagley, when you give him you give him something to write, to, to draw, Mark Bagley really draws in. The characterization here is just, I mean, these characters are acting like heroes instead of just self-absorbed jerks. And yet, Kelly Sue kind of never wrote another Black Widow, like, Black Widow story. They hired the outsider chick to write the prom queen with Cap like with Captain Marvel, and I don't know if I ever want to get around to reviewing Kelly Kelly Sudakonik's Captain Marvel because I don't have much to say about it. The best thing about Kelly Sudakonik's Captain Marvel is that it wasn't that it wasn't Brian Reed's Captain Marvel. Um, but then I want to get to the last story, and this is kind of cheeky calling them the best of modern Avengers stories, but it's an Avengers Assemble story about. You know, the Avengers symbol in annual 2012, which is about the Vision. And basically the Vision dealing, you know, recently resurrected. I, I forget how the Vision came back. I don't care. It was something Bendis did. He what did he, I, he cared less than I did. Um, 
he's back together, and there's a villain named Centurion, a classic uh, Iron Man villain, who's who is uh, turned into a you know an energy being by the Roxon Company. He's attacking them, and but he's attacking innocent people and just hurting rocks and rocks and buildings without the without um, considering a collateral damage. And the Avengers try to help and cure him. And what happens is Roxon and themselves gets involved. And uh, there's a great scene where, like, we're discovered, like the, the Roxon official says, we discovered he's losing cohesion, dying. I, we tried to help, but I just broke the news. There's nothing we can do. I, and the Iron Man, I'm not an idiot, idiot, Hamilton. You mean it wasn't cost-effective to try. The man has protected, supported, defended your company through one scandal after another, given up any chance of a normal life, and you wrote him off just because he's inconvenient. Now, Christos Gage has written for Marvel for about 20 years, and this scene was kind of... This scene, this was written in 2012, and it's kind of not hard to see so many Dan Slott comics with Christos Gage's name on them with script credit still in 2023, 2022, 2023, and not think. It's hard not to read this as a, as a as somewhat of a metaphor for Gage's own feelings about how Marvel treats him. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a good writer, but he's never had a really breakout success. He's had a few creator-owned books, but like uh, aside from the graphic novel Area Ten, none of them really. I can't remember like, and like you know, like the only time you really see him is like on a Dan Slott comic that has a scripting credit to him, which is a shame because he's definitely talented. This is actually because it's about the the Vision asking the Avengers, "Why didn't you help me when I was destroyed?" Well, because the writer didn't care. But like, and it's a it's kind of a metaphor, like you know, like you're help we're helping Centurion, and you never bothered to help me and. The character, the, like people like Pym and Iron Man, don't have a great, don't have a great answer for him. But anyway, it just builds and builds into a surprising ending. Like I said, one of uh, about how people we feel we hate these corporations, but we feel owned and trapped by them anyway. And in some ways, sometimes we feel like they're the only ways the only way these we can be saved is by if we hate these corporations so much. We we sure seem to be trapped in a symbiotic relationship with them of their own of our own will. I think that's kind of the point of the story. And what happens to Centurion at the end of the story is genuinely surprising, but also um not great. Uh, also, he's but also not hard to understand. Uh, just really solid stuff. Really uh, good characterization from um for the vision that gage does he kind of calls the uh previous avengers writer out in their bullshit which you know can't happen enough again uh and i also should, should say like the i'm not a huge fan of this artist but stefano caselli does a really good job uh you know his usual solid job with the uh with uh the uh science bro story i didn't read the rest of the comics run i don't know why i think because warren ellis wrote some of it and but I, if you want, if you want to read a good Avengers comic, if you want to read a good comic by this woman, and I know a lot of you hate this woman, I don't. But I've met her in the real world, and she's actually a nice person. I know you don't want to believe that, but it's true. Um, you would, you would do worse than finding this. I mean, you want to read good, solid Avengers comic when they're being heroes and a great Avengers story by Christos Gage. Read Avengers Assemble Science Bros. I don't think it's that, I don't, I believe it's out of print, but I don't think it's hard to find. Anyway, like and subscribe, hit the bells for notifications. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.